Hello, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Today we'll be uh, continuing our test drive of the Twinstrata Cloud Array. Uh, in this test we're going to focus specifically on the Twinstrata cache and how to efficiently use that for different use cases. Uh, so part of this test drive we'll be giving a quick update of how things are going uh, and then also we will uh, kind of go into some detail on what the Twinstrata cache is. It basically is local storage that you've allocated and that's what the most immediate access uh, for uh, using the Twin Strata Cloud Array will come from and then everything is replicated to the cloud uh, anything that's not in cache or in that local storage will be pulled from the cloud so the size of that cache will affect uh, different latency issues and so really you can configure the cache for several different use cases we'll show three today one is performance using an, a SQL server and in that one we will set up the cache so that it's the exact same size as the data volume so, so in essence all the data is always local and so we never have a latency issue but we get hundred percent protection because as quickly as possible data changes to data are replicated to the cloud then we'll have a blended model which is performance and capacity so a good example would be a file server use case where I want my, my, my active files locally but if for some reason a file uh, takes a little bit longer, to, an older file in particular takes a little bit longer to come back. That's not a, a, a major problem uh, and so we'll show that. And then finally the more of a straight capacity uh, use case where really I want all the data in the cloud and the uh, cache is just as a kind of an initial staging area and that a good example of that might be archive where I only want I, I want to copy stuff to the uh, archive area and then uh, have that cache get flushed out here pretty quickly so we'll show those different use cases just as a reminder to everybody, Storage Switzerland is an analyst firm. We focus on the storage and cloud virtualization marketplaces. Uh, you can find all of our uh, write-ups and details on storage-switzerland.com. So let's, uh, from there, let's jump into the test. So as you can see here, we've got um, the management software uh, up and running, and we're ready to uh, start our test. Just some, a quick update on Twinstrata. They are uh, a cloud array. Uh, provider uh, this, it can be done through uh, a storage gateway either with a cloud appliance uh, an appliance or a uh, virtualized appliance so there's multiple ways to configure it and like I said we've been very impressed with it so far uh, our initial testing which we posted about mid-April uh, went very very smoothly uh, the product worked great uh, we've had the, the, the system up and running now for about um, 30 days uh, almost 45 days and it's been running very very smoothly so uh, we're, we're happy with what we've seen so far so let's uh, jump into the cloud array software so with the background uh, functions out of the way let's take a look at some of the capabilities within the uh, cloud array itself uh, and we're going to be spending a lot of time in the manage a cloud array section because we're going to be uh, growing the cache and doing functions like that uh, you can see that we have three windows uh, servers uh, up and going um, this one right here will be our uh, will end up being our file server you can see that right now we have no uh, disk partitions uh, assigned to it uh, and then this one here will be our um, uh, we're going to use this as our archive server we've already got a volume assigned to this one uh, but we'll go ahead and create another one and then finally uh, this one right here will uh, is our uh, system that's running SQL and that'll be the one that we assign the fully allocated um, uh, cache to so those are our three servers so let's uh, go ahead and get to work on those so our first step and we'll spend a lot of time in the uh, manage cloud array uh, portion so the first steps we need to take is to make sure that uh, we allocate the caches uh, correctly so we'll go into configure and our, uh, we have four options so the first thing we want to do is uh, allocate the cache so you can see here this is our default cache that we created uh, quite a while ago and then you can see that we have uh, three available cache pools to choose from uh, pool one is a, um, a 25 gig cache um, that is all SSD um, and we're going to use that for our SQL instance uh, there's uh, pool two is a 
uh, 9 gig cache or 10 gig cache that we're going to use for our uh, files or mixed workload of file sharing so that the local files will have SSD performance and the rest will just come off of the cloud. And then finally, our um, archive, which is on a regular hard disk, and it's uh, about four gigs in size. Now, one of the things when I re when I create the caches, I'm going to make them just slightly smaller than the actual devices. So, with that part out of the way, well, all we have to do now is go ahead and create our cache instances. And so, we'll call the first one SQL Cache. And we want it to create a, a volume. And so again, we're going to tell it to be 24 gigs. And we'll tell it to select pool one and create. So there's that. That one's all created for us. Now we'll go ahead and create the next one. And we'll call this one FS Cache. And uh, again, we'll make it a little bit smaller than um, the, the full size. And then we'll select pool two for that one and create. And so there's FS cache for us. And then finally, uh, we'll create our archive cache. And uh, you, you guessed it, we're going to call that archive cache. Uh, and we want that one to be uh, four gigs. And we'll select pool three and hit create. So that means that everything is now working. Uh, we've got our three caches created. And then all we have to do now is uh, assign those to uh, create volumes out of those. So our next step is to create policies. So we'll go in and you see we've got our default cache there. Uh, we'll call this one SQL cached. And we will use the SQL cache for that and the provider we're going to use S3 and we hit create. There's that one. And the purpose of these is to connect the cache to the right provider. The, the value would be that if we had a different provider for different purposes we could use that as well. For example, say there was a cheap uh, provider we could uh, use them for really capacity and also we could um, use it for other functions as well. So we'll go ahead and create the next cache here, which will be our FS cached. And the provider again. And then finally, our archive cache. So with our policies uh, all set up, we're ready to move on to the next step. So our next step is to go ahead and provision these volumes out. We'll go ahead and uh, provision it to our SQL server first. And we're going to use the uh, SQL cached. We'll call it uh, SQL twin cast and we'll set the capacity to only 20 gigabytes we'll, which is the size of the cache so basically all the data will always stay local and there is the virtual machine and we'll click provision. So that mapping is done. You can see that that's been done right here. All we have to do is go over to the actual node and ask it to rescan disks. And there's our new volume, 20 gigabytes. Initialize it. Create a new simple volume.
And there we go, there goes the formatting routine. We'll go ahead and set up the other volumes uh, offline without the fi film running and then we'll go ahead and create uh, some of the uh, test tasks that we've been talking about.